In this video, we're going to look at three different productivity practices. So the first one we're going to look at is a model called getting things done, the Pomodoro technique and the 90 day year. This guy is, his name is David Allen and he wrote this book called Getting Things Done. And really it's, I was kind of shocked to see that this is, this guy is really all the rage. I had never heard of him until recently. And I wanted to let you know that there, he's done a really great online course that uh, I don't know if you can do this overseas, but, or outside the United States, but here in the States at your local library, I don't know if you know this, but using your library card, a lot of libraries will allow you to go online and you can actually access through your library card, all of the Linda course courses in their course library. And there's some really good ones. This one uh, for sure is, is a great one that I recommend. But here's the gist of it, and it's not complicated at all. First idea is that you capture everything. And so if you think about going into your kitchen, and let's say your kitchen is out of control, and it's a complete mess, usually what we, we do is we sort of assess, we look at all the things, and then we begin to sort them and put them away. So that's the same thing that you would do um, with everything that has your attention. So everything business and personal, everything from you need to go buy paper towels to you need to finish that proposal for that client, everything. You want to do a complete mind sweep and capture it. How you capture it is up to you. You just want to make sure that it's something you can trust so that it doesn't get lost. So maybe Evernote or Trello or a Google Doc would be a great way to do this. The next thing that you're going to do is as you pick up, after you've captured everything and you look at what you've captured, your very next question is, is this thing, this, this item, is it actionable? Is there something that I can do about it or with it? And if the answer is no, you have three choices. Throw it in the trash, file it for someday maybe, he calls that incubation, or keep it as reference. So I think that that reference part could be really a slippery slope because there's a lot of things you can look at and say, oh, I will need to reference that later when really it needs to go in the trash. So I think that that requires an honest conversation with yourself. But an example of a reference that you might want to keep, uh, I was just doing this a couple of days ago and I ran across a list of babysitters and phone numbers that was given to me by my daughter's summer camp director. So that's definitely something that I want to keep to reference later. Now, if it is actionable, and this to me is the really the, the crux of this whole system, this is what makes this stand out, makes it unique, and makes me, uh, this is what really fires me up, okay? So if it's actionable, then... The next question is, what is the next immediate action? Will it take less than two minutes? And if the answer is yes, do it now. This little section, this little leg of the framework to me is everything because there are so many things we actually can knock out in less than two minutes, right? So this, if, we, if you only do this, I really think it could make a big difference. Or if it's something that can be delegated, get that thing off your desk, off your plate and delegate it. Or it might be something that only you can do. In that case, you're going to need to set up your next actions. All right. The next thing that we're going to look at is the Pomodoro technique. This guy, Francesco Cirillo, created this technique and talk about simple. It's so simple, but it's great. It's called the Pomodoro technique because it started with him using a tomato shaped kitchen timer to help him study in college. And Pomodoro in Italian means tomato. Here's how it works. You use a timer to break your work down into 25 minute blocks. And this is separated by a five minute break. 
and after four consecutive working time blocks, you take a longer break, around 15 to 20 minutes. So each 25 minute work block is, is called a Pomodoro. And the benefit of this technique comes from the frequent breaks, which helps your mind to stay fresh. And these focused time blocks force you to adhere to fixed time limits. So you'll be encouraged to complete a task more quickly, or in the case of a large task, spread it out over a number of Pomodoros. And the length of the the working and the break times can vary depending on what you prefer, but the process remains the same, which is start a timer, work until the timer rings, take a short break, and every four Pomodoros take a longer break. Below this video, you'll see a link to links, several links to a lot of really cool apps that are available to help you with the Pomodoro technique. There's all sorts of cool uh, timers for your Android or your iOS. Uh, device um, that you can take a peek at. So now we're going to take a quick look at the basic framework of Todd Herman's 90 day year. Actually, the things that we're going to look like look at are not uh, were not invented by Todd, but he did a great job sort of gathering those wonderful tools that are out there and putting them together in a system that makes sense. So this is just a really brief overview, but essentially we become less productive when we multitask. And Todd presents some really compelling research that shows, you know, you may think that you're getting a ton accomplished when you work on four different things throughout the day, but he actually says we can be more productive when we block and tackle. You can Google block and tackle the block and tackle method. Todd didn't invent that. Um, but the idea is that essentially you create, you focus on one thing, you block out time to focus on one thing, tackle those things, get them done before you move on to the next thing. Pretty straightforward, right? And he says we can be more productive when we use tools like the Eisenhower matrix. This is the Eisenhower matrix that President Eisenhower made famous. I guess he invented it. It's really a very helpful tool. So you'll notice there's four quadrants, okay? And the top right-hand corner is, you'll see, urgent but, sorry, non-urgent but important. This is our planning quadrant, relationship building, new opportunities, strategic thinking, improving systems. Beside that, the red square, urgent and important. So this is our doing quadrant, urgent customer requests, quality issues, deadline driven projects. Lower right hand corner, the blue corner is not important and not urgent. So if at all possible, we want to eliminate that stuff. Trivial stuff, busy work, time wasters. Then the orange column is not important yet urgent. So this would be like other people's emergencies or interruptions, some phone calls, some emails and meetings, just distractions. Where do you spend most of your time? Something good to think about, right? Assessing how much time you spend on what you're doing will help you to move more quickly towards your goal. And this is my version of Todd's, uh, of something that Todd has in the 90 day year. His is uh, a bit more sophisticated. This is definitely a stripped down version, uh, but helpful nonetheless. And the idea, this is called the entrepreneur report card. Uh, essentially, what you're doing is assessing the value of your activities. And this is extremely uh, an extremely eye-opening activity if you take a moment to, to do it. And it only takes a few moments. Um, actually do this at the end of one workday. So in the first column, we've got a $10 value, then 25, 100, and 1,000. Then we're going to list the activities and the amount of time spent with each of those activities. So in this example, in the red, in the $10 column, I have editing membership site, okay? Why is that in the $10 column? Because that's, that's how much it would cost for me to hire someone to do that, $10 an hour, okay? And in the $100 column, um, I've got e-learning and copywriting, two hours spent on that. So the idea is that those activities would bring in, let's say, about $100. Or if I hired someone to do that, 
it would be $100 an hour. And then in the $1,000 column, one-on-one -on -one help with a client, one hour there, and writing and recording course content. That's really only stuff that I can do that let's say would bring in $1,000 an hour, and I did five hours of that, so the value in that column is $5,000. And in the, in the $100 column, I spent two hours doing that, $200. So if you look at the bottom, it was an actual, not actual as I was paid that, but the actual value of the time was $5,230. The daily target, $250, let me tell you how I came up with that. So essentially, what you would do is look at how many days you have left in the year, then decide how much you wanna make in income by the end of the year, or whatever target you set, the end of the month, whatever, okay? You pick the you pick the cutoff date. Then look at how many days you actually will be working. There's probably gonna be some weekends, uh, some holidays, some vacation time that you're gonna take that you won't be working. So you're gonna X those out in your calendar. Then you're gonna divide the number of work days by your target revenue goal, and that's gonna give you a daily target. And if you do a scorecard at the end of the day, you'll see that this will be very much in line with what you actually produce. The revenue goal that you actually hit at the end of the year, if you do this, it will be, so if you spend all your time in the $10 an hour column between now and then, you're not gonna hit your revenue goal and it's gonna make things pretty crystal clear for you because a lot of us spend way too much time in that far left column. So whether you decide to use the Pomodoro method or the getting things done method or the 90 day year or a combination of all three of those things, I think it's important to have a plan and it might be that you pull on one of each of these throughout the day, depending on your state of mind at any given time. But it's nice to have these tools available. Down below this video, there's links to all sorts of great resources.